Konnichiwa, I'm in the sun. It's Grey from Akasashi's Tea House Home in Japan. I hope you're good and I hope you're Genki. Okay, today I've got something different. Today I have my kind of review of the book, The Exegesis of Philip K. Dick, which was published in 2011. It's edited by Pamela Jackson and Jonathan Latham. First of all, let's check the official dictionary definition of exegesis. And I had to check the pronunciation of that three or four different times. Exegesis means a critical explanation or interpretation of a text, especially of scripture. For example, the task of biblical exegesis. So what is the exegesis of Philip K. Dick? Here are two quotes taken from the hardback cover. A great and calamitous sequence of arguments with the universe. Poignant, terrifying, ludicrous and brilliant. The exegesis is the sort of book associated with legends and madmen. But Dick wasn't a legend and he wasn't mad. He lived among us and was a genius. That's by Jonathan Latham, one of the editors. Here's quote number two. Based on thousands of pages of typed and handwritten notes, journal entries, letters and story sketches, Dick documents his eight-year attempt to fathom what he called 2374, a postmodern visionary experience of the entire universe transformed into information. Okay, let me briefly summarise what 2374 was. Philip K. Dick believed he had had a visionary experience in February and March 1974, and then he spent the next eight years trying to make sense of it. So I picked up a physical copy of the hardback of the exegesis of Philip K. Dick, and here, here's a mini photo just to give you a sense of scale. That's the exegesis, as you can see on the left, and there's a copy of the science fiction masterworks version of Ubik. This is a big book. Not including the introduction, editor's notes, afterward, end notes, and glossary, there are 900 pages of Philip K. Dick's exegesis. With around 450 words per page, you're talking about over 400,000 words. And don't forget, this is the edited version of Dick's notes. As you can imagine, this book is best suited for hardcore fans or scholars of PKD. So I'm going to use the term PKD for Philip K. Dick because, I don't know why, I get kind of embarrassed saying Dick all the time. Hey, but what do I know? I'm a guy. I teamed up with a few blogger friends as we attempted to read this exegesis back in January 2016. We were going to do it over a year, tackling it in 12 75-page installments. So that means reading 75 pages each month. Our PK Dickian journey was made more tolerable by Nikki's idea of accompanying our mammoth read with one Philip K. Dick novel per month. So as I was reading the exegesis, I was also reading one of Philip K. Dick's novels each month and doing a review. Now this is back in 2016. I'm reading this review to you now. Um, so it's a little bit dated, but bear with me because I think we'll have some fun going through this. Now obviously, the exegesis is not an easy book to read, nor to review. So what I did with this review, in quotation marks, is I copied and pasted my reading progress notes that I put on Goodreads back in the day, and also some of my uh, personal notes in my, my journal. So here we go. Apologies for the length. If you make it to the end of this video, I'll be very impressed. The exegesis of Philip K. Dick, one reader's experience. January 2016. The first quote. The bare bones, so to speak, of the world, our world, are revealed. Page 3. Several times I've had the uncanny experience of meeting people who resemble persons, characters I'd previously made up for my novels. Page 13. So, was Philip K. Dick writing his books, or were his books writing him, as he's gone on to suggest quite a few times? So I'll give these quotes, I'll give the page number as well. Something strange, however, exists in my life and seems to have for a long time. Whether it comes from my odd lifestyle or causes the lifestyle, I don't know. But there it is. Page 22. So I'm taking this in very small doses because there's so much to wrap your head around. February 2016. Next quote. If I were to say to you, the universe which we perceive is a hologram, you might think I'd said something original. 
until you realise that I'd only updated Plato's metaphor of the images flashed on the walls of our cave, images which we take to be real. Page 80. Now, don't forget, these are taken from PKD's notes in the 70s, you know, 1970s, so we're talking 50 years ago. And here's my comment on the quote. Plato, ancient Greece and Rome, philosophy, the roots of religion, coexisting dimensions, immanent mind and ubik. His writing style makes it actually readable, but this is very, very heavy. Next quote, page 115. The reality of orthogonal time, cyclic time, would make it possible for the golden age, the time before the fall, to return, restoring all which has been lost. Next quote, page 142. What is possible, though, as I've said before, is the notion of mitosis-like splittings of the present, due to time dysfunctions, perhaps in our past, that result in alternate worlds, as in the man in the high castle. Now here's my comment. Mitosis is uh, the division of the nucleus of a cell. That's taken from the Greek word which means warp thread. Yes, guys and girls, my thread has been truly warped by PKD. March 2016. This is my comment. Yes, something I've been interested in since I read Huxley's The Doors of Perception, 1954. The brain as a filter of consciousness. Now this is taken from a footnote by one of the contributors to the exegesis, well to the editing I guess, and it's by Jeff Kripal. This is what he says. Philip K. Dick came to a conclusion that many other thoughtful people, from William James and Henry Bergson to Aldous Huxley, have come to. Namely, that the brain may be a kind of filter, transmitter or reducer of consciousness. When this filter brain is temporarily shut down or suppressed by whatever means, mental illness, psychedelics, political torture, meditative discipline, a car wreck, a profound sexual experience, even heart surgery, other forms of consciousness and reality, many of them cosmic in scope and nature, can and often do shine through. So again, that's by Jeff Kripal. It's a footnote on page 153. Okay, here's my next note. I'm just saying, well, I enjoyed the uh, chemically challenged letter to Claudia Bush, one of his fans, but after that, it all went a bit too theological. He still keeps bringing up Ubik. I can't want to say Ubik or Ubik. Is Ubik the answer? Okay, here's the next quote. This is from page 186, PKD. I feel retrospectively that flow my tears and, very likely, Frolics 8 were both engineered subliminally, carrying in encoded form material from the Logos, or Godhead. Here's my response. Okay, so the Godhead subliminally aided PKD in his creation of those two novels. Who knew? And then one more quote from PKD, page 221. Prior to early 1974, I would experience fear and tension, especially at night, for no accountable reason. Yep, I know that feeling. Okay, let's move on to April 2016. Another quote, this is page 231. This fits my grand theme in my writing. The awful truth about reality is obscured from us. My other theme about androids programmed to imagine they are human i.e. self-determining, is another basic facet of this. Next quote, page 243, Philip K. Dick. With no therapist to guide me, with no human guide, just Christ and my cat Pinky, I made it back. I have written down all that I saw, heard and understood. It was not delusion I found during my trip, it was absolute reality. And here's my comment. I love this quote almost as much as PKD loved his cat Pinky. But I'm struggling with this at the moment. If PKD is Elijah and Zeus is Zagreus, who is Zebra? Phil's dead cat. Now those are names that he keeps bringing up during these mammoth quotations and mammoth-like ponderings. You've got Elijah, you've got Christ, of course, Zeus, Zagreus, Zebra. I'm lost out. Okay, next quote is from page 272. Philip K. Dick. The world is not merely counterfeit. There is more. It is counterfeit, but under it lies another world. And it is this other world, this Logos world, which filters or breaks through. Ubik, then, is a step up from Maze of Death and Three Stigmata in presenting this. Are you still with me? 
I appreciate it. Okay, we're up to May, May 2016. Let's start with another quote. This is from page 324. What I write about doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There is fun and religion and psychotic horror strewn about like a bunch of hats. Also, there is a social or sociological drift. Rather than toward the hard sciences, the overall impression is childish, but interesting. This is not a sophisticated person writing. Okay, next is a footnote by David Gill on page 325. PKD's thematic concern for the little guy, as opposed to the galactic royalty featured in space opera, was one of the defining features of his work. Next quote by Philip K. Dick, page 337. Eye in the sky, time out of joints, three stigmata, ubic and maze of death are the same novel written over and over again. The characters are all out cold and lying around together on the floor, mass hallucinating a world. Why? Because this is our condition. We are mass hallucinating this 1970s world. Did the Wachowskis get a little bit of inspiration from this quote, do you think? Not just from Grant Morrison's The Invisibles? Anyway, I digress. July 2016. Philip K. Dick, page 509. Ubik is the most important book ever written. Ubik, the entity, is the Tao, and the Logos, or Christ, or Sophia. Ubik is true. It deals with, one, the dialectic basis of all process, and two, with the Tao. And here's my comment. This is heavy, heavy, heavy going. The book's pretty heavy too. Okay, my quotes and my comments get a little bit shorter from now on, so bear with me guys and girls. Keep going, here we go. August 2016. A quote by Philip K. Dick, page 556. The world was past. I was future. I'd be moving faster and faster for decades due to the amphetamines. Then, September 2016, this footnote by Steve Erickson caught my eye. Like a lot of readers, I consider Philip K. Dick an ideas man rather than a stylist. Generally, he doesn't write sentences that hold within them whole worlds. Rather, his collective work has to be taken together to add up to something bigger on the inside than out. Steve, are you talking about the TARDIS? Okay, two more entries. The first one, November 2016. This is what I had to say. Whew, ten months down, two to go. 75 pages per month doesn't sound a lot, but it has been difficult to keep reading at times. These are big pages full of small type and heavy heavy ideas. I wonder how many pens PKD got through and typewriter ribbons while he was writing his exegesis. 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 No! No! Oh my god, I can't pronounce it. Okay, here's my last entry. December 2016. Yes, I finished reading. Made it to the end. I don't think I would have made it to the end if not for the encouragement from Nikki from BookPunks and my fellow bloggers. It was a great idea to try and take it in 75 page monthly installments. It's less a book than one artist's search for meaning. The first 100 pages contain a series of letters PKD wrote to a number of people. These are fascinating correspondences. They're often very funny and they offer a glimpse into Dick's unique mind. They are also, probably, the most readable section of the book. After the letters, it becomes more and more theoretical and theological as Philip K. Dick searches his life, his dreams, works for answers. There's some beautiful prose to be found in here, and the footnotes are always well written and interesting, but honestly, it was very hard going at times. The exegesis of Philip K. Dick is only recommended for hardcore PKD fans and scholars of his work, as I said before. Hello? Is there anybody out there? I really appreciate it if you've made it this far. Seriously, thanks so much for listening to the end. Um, yeah, that was it. That's my kind of review, commentary, of the exegesis of Philip K. Dick. There we go, I can almost say it now. But I tell you, I only recommend it for real, real fans or, you know, true scholars of his work. So, as I was saying, the first hundred or so pages are very, very readable, very entertaining, where he's writing letters to different fans, editors, you know, friends, other fellow writers. But 
after that, the uh, the journey, the journey into you know his search for meaning, I tell you it does get very heavy. But yeah, it was very interesting, and it provided me with some fascinating quotes, some really good footnotes, and it got me you know really into reading his books because as I said, I was reading a novel a month at the time as well, and hopefully over the next few months I'll try and get these mini reviews up uploaded to youtube but they are on my site if you want to check it out my wordpress blog which is called simply wacky zashi's reviews i'll put a link in the description so as always thank you so much for watching for listening um, do drop a comment let me know if you have any interest in pkd philip k dick um, how many novels of his have you read do you have a particular favorite i'd love to hear and i hope to see you in a future video this is Grey from Makazashi's Tea House, signing off. Matane.